everybody, and welcome to the final set review video for Guilds of Ravnica. I am Evan Irwin. I'm Aaron Campbell. And I'm Ruben Bressler. And today we're going to talk all about the green cards and the Celestia cards and all the rest of the cards of the set as we go over each and every one. And we get to start with Affectionate Indrik. So cool. So yeah. cute. A green and five generic mana for an uncommon 4-4 four, four beast. When it enters the battlefield, you may have it fight target creature you don't control. Mm. This card's terrific. This card is 100% playable. It's easily first pickable. It's going to be in all your green decks. I saw it do great work at the World Championships and at the pre-pre-release. Ain't nothing that's... like. And on top of it, it's got cats. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a 4-4 four, four creature with a removal spell attached. I mean, that's fine for six mana. Oh, that's certainly good enough. Oh, for sure. This is a Flame Tongue Kavu style of card. Um, six is a lot to try to get it in constructed. Yeah, I don't think it's constructed. But yeah. it is that. certainly a reasonable first pick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is very, very good. And cats. Yeah. The interesting thing for me about cats is that, you know, we do have, um, we, whenever you have an urban center, there are different animals that take uh, precedence as to whatever those animals are in your big city, whether it's rats or... Uh, squirrels or buzzards or small birds or monkeys in some part of the world mm -hmm. um, and obviously stray cats and cats are, are a big problem in a lot of major cities mm -hmm. uh, places like Jerusalem are overrun with with stray cats really um, yeah there's a huge cat problem um, in in not just that city but that's one I've been to a lot that there's just a massive overpopulation uh, anyway, Ravnica, it appears, cats are sort of like the local mammal populace. Um, and they are also carnivores, which leads me to believe that there's a bunch of stuff for them to eat. Uh, and this is not the last cat card that we'll see. In fact, there is a cat that is adorable that we'll pick up on later. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, be, this Indrik is particularly affectionate in that it has a whole uh, a group of cats that follow it around and does the nuzzling as well. He is an affectionate boy, all right? Mm -hmm. B-O-I. Yeah. He, he does what he has to do, and sometimes he accidentally pushes you off a cliff. Right, because it's not the problem isn't the Indrik's enthusiasm; it's Ravnica's lack of guardrails, which really that is uh, 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 that is something you need to take up with the Azorius and whoever the builders are. Right, who's the OSHA um, of Ravnica? Yeah, exactly. That's what I want to know: the health and safety. Arbor Arboretum? Arboretum. Arboretum Elemental is two green seven generic mana for an uncommon seven five elemental with Convoke and Hexproof because that's what I want, giant scary monsters with Hexproof on. Well, I want giant scary monsters with Hexproof, not tiny enchantable creatures with Hexproof. I think that this is significantly better okay. than the four mana Demir Hexproof card. Sure. Because um, you have to work for Arboretum Elemental. Mm -hmm. um, you need uh, between you need nine total lands and creatures in play. That's a lot of hard work. Whereas you just need blue, blue, black, black for that for the uh, the Night Vale uh, uh, Spectre. It's very similar to uh, the City's Blessing. Yeah. Yeah, you because know, you need a ten permanents, right? Right. So you got to have sort of nine permanents out in order to get this out. Right. And I think that that's a reasonable cost. The also other, another part of this is there's not an additional trample. There's no. Other ability, you have to do some additional work in order to make it be able to trample over 1-1s one right. uh, or give it flying or any of those kind of <clears throat> abilities. Uh, five toughness is, the magical, is the magical number. There are a bunch of five fives in the set that this will just trade with. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that this is an unreasonable use of Hexproof. Yeah, this is cards probably do a lot more work for for you blocking than it is attacking. A lot of the time, yeah. Just because you know they can't do anything to it, you know exactly what stats you're looking at, and sometimes you're like, you know what, you have a five five, I got a seven five, we got to trade these things yeah. because they're just too good. Uh, ultimately, not a card that I want two of honestly no. in my deck, but I want one of uh -huh. in Maybe. my Celestia combo deck. I, I mean, think it's probably pretty good. It's fine. I mean, it, it's well, you between... don't have to poo-poo in the spring and locks it on the gains you life. That card's amazing. I mean, this yeah. card's fine. The four five flyer is a better uncommon than this. The four yeah. five flyer in white, uh, I would rather have as my big top end convoke finish uh, uh, effect, mm -hmm. um, just because it comes with built in evasion. Sure. This is gonna get gummed up on a board a lot of the time. Oh, for sure. This is this is gonna be chunk blocked. Card's fine. Until like I'm not unhappy with it in my convoke deck, but. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not the best uncommon either. I just think it's uncommon for a reason. For sure. That oh, 100%. Beast Whisperer is next. If you want to talk about an atomic freaking nuclear bomb of ridiculousness and limited, oh my god, yeah. go watch the free pre-release. The first match yeah. they had this card out. Oh my god, mm -hmm. it drew a million cards. They got to play <clears> a million <throat> creatures. This card is absolutely ridiculous. This is one of those, like, if you don't kill this card immediately, you're going to lose to it. Beast right. Whisper <laughs> is two green, two generic mana for a rare 2 3 elf druid. It's even an elf, for God's sake. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. 
Now notice it's cast. It's not when it enters the battlefield. It's not for all your tokens or whatever. You have to be casting creatures. But when you do, you get a free card out of it. Yeah. Glimpse of Nature, famously banned in modern. Um, you know, there, there has been a, an elf deck at various points in modern. This might be something they want to either cord into or coco into. Um, and then, you know, you allow a deck like that to go off between, you know, Heritage Druid and all the mana that it can make and can really get out of hand. Yeah, but... One of the big knocks against Primordial Sage in Commander is that it costs six. Yeah. And so a lot of your things are already done by that point. It's a four, <clears> five, or six. This being a two, three, four, four coming down two turns earlier is a huge deal. Yeah, this this card is real. I actually think this may reach uh, standard. Oh yeah, because the the you know, there's it's three toughness, which isn't the greatest, no. but it's more than two, which is good. The mono green has been a thing. The mono green stumpy deck with yeah. mono wire elves and steel leaf druid, and yeah, playing this on turn three and untapping with it. Oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> yeah, that's good clean living right there. Bounty of Might, speaking of ridiculous bombs and limited, yeah. two green, four generic mana for a rare instant. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until on a turn. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until on a turn. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until on a turn. This feels like the evolution. We've seen this in original round, if I believe, yeah. with Seeds of Strength. Yep, and yep. then there was a version <coughs> in Return of Ravnica, which was, <coughs> which was Common Bond. Uh, uh, Common Bond put a plus one, plus one counter on two target creatures. Okay, because right. there was There's another There's probably version. another yeah. version. And so this is now the version we're seeing in this one. And it only gets bigger. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now it's a rare, which is pretty fantastic. Well, the last <laughs> line they don't have right there really clearly is uh, target opponent scoops them up. <laughs> right. Scoops them right up. That's what yeah, they do. Yeah, it's important to note that you can, it can be all on one creature, it can be on two creatures, or it can be on three creatures. Yeah, yeah really, really interesting. Now, Marshall Sutcliffe of the Limited Resources Podcast is famous for saying that you never pick a combat trick with your first pick. This Lies. seems like it might be an exception to that rule. Mm -hmm. This this to me is not a combat trick. This is a game ending sure. spell. This yeah. is a game winning, game ending, completely turn it around. God save the queen. Yeah. This card is insane. And, and our uh, some of our friends from the I forget the the Laura Nautas podcast, yeah. in addition to some of the other uh, uh, folks from Brazil, this was their preview card. So. Nice. Well, this one's really, really sweet. This yeah. this to me just reminds me As of a Overrun. podcast that very often gets ridiculous green things. It's true. I'm a big fan of this. Card. I found out Meg from the Laura Nautas has been invited to, I believe, the Brazilian pre pre release. Nice. Ooh. Their version of the pre pre release, and I'm so happy for her, and they're great. Oh, nice. They're doing a version of yeah. just that. That's yeah, they've awesome. done one before. Uh, a couple of guys from Team Card Order have done it before Card Order Brazil. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to help me out here. Circuitous. <laughs> Circuitous route. That's interesting. Uh, we have a special guest to talk about it. Let's see what they say. Hey Magic Mags, it's Farms this Judge, and the card I chose is Circuitous Route. Search your library for up to two basic land cards and or gate cards and put them on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. I love the different routes you can take playing this card, and Limited is going to be one of those cards that staples together your very greedy four or five color Limited deck. In Standard, I don't see it doing that much because our current suite of Elder Dragons don't have like an immediate board impact like Dragonlord and Tarka did. But where I love it the most is in Budget Commander, where you have one card that can fetch you four different colors of mana. And we've never seen a card like that recently, and for those players that can't afford fetches and shocks, it's a huge boon. So for the various routes and routes you have playing this card, I think it's a card I'm going to see resolving quite a number of times. See you around. Thank you so much, Pharmacist Judge, as always, for both you know sponsoring the show and helping out in the Kickstarter. Wow, That's <clears> awesome. Yeah. Uh, this is a super neat card, particularly again for the uh, for the budget-minded player. Yeah. Well, even if you're not a budget player, it's still just another ramp card. You yeah. know, I play mono green all math, and so you've got your Kadama's Reach, you've got your Boundless Realms, and things like that. But sometimes you just want it because it's another spell. The other thing is format. explosive vegetation. This is just a strictly better mm -hmm. explosive vegetation because it has the option of giving you okay. gates. Now, that's not relevant a lot of the time, but it's, I mean, explosive veggies was a tournament playable mm -hmm. card twice. Yeah. It's first time through standard. I think it made the finals of a pro tour, wow. ramping into seven drops and doing ridiculous things like that. Um, it, it remains to be seen if something like Vevictus is relevant enough. To Wasn't be it like a Tarka was being played? It was regular right Tarka, and then that was Ulamog. So it was, right. It was just right. A red so the second time around, it was a Tarka, mm -hmm. and there was Ulamog. But the first time around, it was ramping into like Rorix Bladewing and Quosin, right. whatever Sky, yeah, something. and like Jareth laying in Titan and some ridiculous, you know, right. not good cards, but you you do what you can to get by back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, now you get at seven, you have well, you have Palladium Moors at six, you have Vevictus at seven, 
Uh, and then the other green one is Arcades, which you don't really need a circuitous route for. But right. there's also Chromium at seven, which is not totally irrelevant. Just there's fine. also just a bunch of giant other non-dragon things that you can be ramping into. So if there's a ramp deck and you can go turn two Elfame Druid, turn three this, turn four seven drop, then that is a play pattern we've seen in the past be successful. I would not be totally surprised to see this in a constructed tournament. Meteor Golem. Woo! Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's sweet. I mean, sweet. depending on the metagame, Meteor Golem <coughs> might be the right 7-drop to be ramping into. It get, that we gets real Planeswalkers. We still have Forest, don't we? we still have, that's yeah. at 8, though. Okay. So, still. Still. But if we go Land of War Elf, Elfame Druid, uh, Veggies, and... Or new Veggies. Fresh Veggies. Fresh. Then the, you can the go turn one. 4... Verdant Force, yeah. which would be a heck of a heck of a big game. Oh, jeez. Well, uh, is it the route or is it the route? You can choose whichever one you want. Okay. Just don't don't forget your roots. Wow. All right. Well, thanks again to the pharmacist judge. Thank you. You thanks are... for staying true to our roots. Wow. Crushing Canopy is next. It's a green and two generic mana for an instant. It is a common that says choose one, destroy target creature with flying, or destroy target enchantment. Yeah, we've talked about the you know the uptick in, in modal spells. We've noticed an increase in those, and you know this is a card that by itself it's either a plummet or a naturalize, which can make you feel locked into a card. Um, and sometimes it feels like a dead draw, where you're like, well, I have this flyer staring at me, and all I have is this naturalize, or I have this enchantment staring at me, and all I have is this plummet. You know, this is very rarely a dead card. You know, flying bombs are common and limited. You know, there aren't uh, you know enchantments. Sometimes you have that really good one of enchantment, and so this is something I'd be perfectly happy. You know, depending on the form format main decking one. Yeah. I don't see this being good in standard necessarily, no. but there have been, um, I remember when the green red ramp deck with the Tarka was a thing, Plummet was a sideboard yeah. card. That was something that you would do to get rid of a big flyer. Yeah. I've traditionally played, I mean, I think that the first time this was this was in, in a set, I didn't main deck it, and then the second time that it was in a set, I think was... Ixalan block, if I, I recall like correctly, mm -hmm. and I would main deck it because there were so many flyers that you just had to deal with, uh, and then there were a couple of enchantments, obviously, things like Vance's Blasting Cannons and whatnot. So if there's... Or the black-white <coughs> ridiculous enchantment. Right. Anointed Procession or whatnot. No, no it was not. something else. Profane Procession. Profane Procession. That card is stupid. Yeah. But there aren't... It doesn't seem like there are any enchantments that are that mu that much of must-answers. Well, mm. you've got the one that turns your tokens into 4 fours. True. <laughs> there aren't a ton. Yeah. It, this can we'll get see. rid of a Luminous Bonds in a pinch or a Conclave, uh, remove your thing from the game in a pinch, but usually this is going to be taking down... A uh, three, 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 four flyer for five or something along those lines, which is good enough. Yeah, this is especially card... in the deck where you want it, like Celestia. Right, you're probably going to get it late, and yeah. you're it's not anything you want to pick early, and you're probably going to sideboard it in mm -hmm. because you just don't have room for it in your deck. Um, this <clears throat> yeah. isn't a card that I'm super excited to play unless flyers are way more important right. than I think they are, and sometimes they are. Sometimes yeah. you're like, wow, every every color has all these flyers or whatever. Right. Um, Devkarin, Devkarin. Dev yeah, I don't know that one. That's a that's a race Dev, of some Dev kind. Karen. Dev Karen. Dev Karen. Sure. Dev Karen Dissident is a green and generic mana for a two two common elf warrior, and it has green and four generic mana colon. It gets plus two plus two until end of turn. I love cards like this. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen mana things like that in the past that you paid more for, and so I think this could see play. Good early, good late. Yeah. That's what I enjoy about these types of cards, and that's all. Also, what I enjoy in terms of the design of these, where R and D is like, look, we know you like bears, and bears are good, but sometimes you don't want to draw one on turn seven when nothing's right. happening. Well, now you do. Because you have something to do with sure. all that mana. This card is medium early and medium late, which means that it's good because it's it itself is essentially a split card at that point. Right. Um, this card's fine. <laughs> You're probably going to wheel copies of this. Probably. Um, but I, you know, I'm not unhappy with it. The, the thing about this set that I really like is that the aces aren't unbeatable and the deuces aren't completely complete utter garbage. Yeah. yeah. Which is really nice. And that was the key I felt to why Dominaria was so good, was my common blood tallow candle can yeah. beat your Lyra. Right. Yes, you've got a Lyra, but I got this thing for a common that kills it. We exactly. want those things. District Guide is next. One of the best cards in the set, I think. A green and two generic mana for a 2-2 two -two <clears throat> uncommon elf scout. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land or a gate card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. Bit of an upgrade, you know, there's some comparison between Explosive Vegetation and Securitas Route because you can get gates. Yeah. This is a Borderland Ranger has certainly seen yeah. play in Standard at various <clears throat> points, and this lets you get a gate, which yeah. is relevant. And so I think this will certainly see Standard play. Absolutely. Every time Borderland Ranger and Civic Wayfinder have been in Standard, that they've been two, three, four ofs. Uh, in whatever format they are. We've talked about a lot of cards that have a really high ceiling. This card has the highest floor. This right. card is certainly going to be in standard decks. Right. Um, it is also a 
reasonable first pick in a lot of strategies. In your um, strategies. <clears throat> especially in my strategies, where I want to be going and getting mana fixing and, and things like that. Worst to worst comes to worst, it's also sacrifice fodder. I seem to remember sure. Borderland Ranger being a thing when the birthing pod decks were around, so it's like, <clears throat> it did what you needed it to do. You've got your Bone Splinters card that we have here with yeah. the scissors. You've got Maraska sacrificing a permanent. Sometimes it did what it needed to do. This is and... probably the card that's coming back off of my gruesome encores the most often. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this to turn one land Royals, turn two this, turn three Vraska. Oh, man. I'm living that life. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm all about it. So uh, so that's pretty terrific. So District Guide is one of those cards that may not necessarily jump out at you as like, wow, this is a standard constructed all-star, but like, you, it, it's yeah. really good. You notice the difference in the formats you have it in. Absolutely. All right. Next up is Generous Stray. It is a green and two generic mana for a 1-2, and when it enters, it is a common cat, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. Good kitty. Good, good kitty. This, this again, to me, is would you play a 1 green, 1-2, one two, kicker, two generic mana, draw a card? Uh, I probably wouldn't pay a one, play a 1 green mana, 1-2. I wouldn't play a woodland elf. Right. What I'm saying is it would have kicker <coughs> of two generic oh, mana, sure. draw a card. Would you play that card? Potentially. Potentially. I mean, I think that this one's less of a split card than, than the others. Uh, we've certain, certainly seen Elvish Visionary be playable. Even things like Kavu Climber that just are kind of expensive replacement effects. Uh, this card's fine, mm -hmm. and it stands in front of those tokens that uh, Celestine is going to be making all the time, and it gives you, it replaces itself. So. Just remember that cats place their gifts <clears throat> with care so that a bare foot will step on them in the middle of the night. Yeah. yeah. Adorable. That's adorable. This, this is a card that is meh. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's, it's late pick. It's 23rd card. It's not god-awful. No. It's just not that great. Yeah. It, it helps with Convoke, right? Helps with Convoke. It's a thing to sacrifice to your sacrifice things. One sure. power means it's a good mentor target if you pair oh, it with nice. a light card. Yeah. And so. Celestia is a good mentor yeah. target. You will teach that cat how to get <coughs> crazy. That's right. Moving on to Golgari Raiders. It's a green and three generic mana for a 0-0 zero, zero uncommon elf warrior with haste. And it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each creature in your graveyard. Interesting. Sweet. Yeah, this is a strict upgrade over a card called Undergrowth Scavengers, which I think is where they got the keyword undergrowth from. I think they, uh, um, doesn't it count all creatures in all graveyards may, for that one? I think that's be. the only difference. Sure. But, Regardless. This, this one has haste, though. Yeah. This is something I'm not sure the dedicated undergrowth decks want. However, I could see this. There's been some talk of, you know, that an ability is good when you can just sort of get there by playing magic. Right. And so I don't think a deck that's trying to go graveyard happy wants this because it's just a haste body that can be chumped. But I think if you're playing just a green aggressive deck anyways, you're bound to naturally just get creatures in yard. So you really don't have to try for it. So I just think it's a body that just by playing magic can be serviceable with haste, and it just happens to have undergrowth on right. it, that makes sense. I mean, I think if this is at four power, it's fan freaking fantastic. Yeah. Like, if you can get this to four or more, this is a, yeah. an all-star in your deck. At three, it's average. At four, it starts being really good. Right, and at five, you just get absurd. Right. Like, you just five and up, you're just like, wow, what a top deck. This is crazy. So I, I do think, again, you're just playing magic in order to play this card. So, like, yes, you want it with your other undergrowth cards. Yes, you want to be able to mill yourself with surveil and whatnot, and that works great with it. But that's not the, necessarily the reason why you're playing this card is you have yeah. all these effects. It's just like, well, I'm playing magic, and this is pretty good when I play magic. Yeah. yeah. So that's sweet. Grappling Sundew is next, a green and a generic mana for an 0-4 uncommon plant with Defender and this Reach. This confuses me. It has green and four generic mana, colon, it gains indestructible until end of turn. I'm positive there's a reason why this card exists. I mean, probably to stop something giant from killing you. Yeah, I mean, we had Amaranthine Wall. Right. Um, which was an 06 for 4 that could gain indestructible for 2. Right. This is a 2 that can gain indestructible for 5. This also has reach. So it's able to stand in front of the big giant angels and dragons and right. if you need to just have a stopgap. Yeah, this is this is weird. This feels like it goes into that part of that defender type stuff. We I mean, talked about. for sure. And we'll get to more of that later. <clears throat> but reach is is a big upgrade. Maybe you mentioned sort of building the brawl deck with, was it Vivek or the... Vivictus Osmani? The one with the walls, Defenders. Oh, Arcades. Yeah. Arcades. Maybe there? I mean, potentially. Yeah. I mean, it's more Defenders. That's cool. I, I dig the, the, I think the, the actual picture is really oh, neat yeah. and interesting. Um, you know, some rooftop gardens attract bees, other capture dragons. Which That's, is nice. Which is really nice. The world's so, biggest Venus flytrap. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure out if I could give... Like a great strategy, other than like it probably goes in Celestia. It does great with Convo. It does great to stop you from dying to yeah, something sure. stupid. I mean, it buys you time. I'm just trying to think of what it buys you time. Like, what are you finding that you hope it buys you right. time to find? Like, probably a giant Convo thing. Yeah. yeah. 
Hatchery Spider is next. It's two green, five generic mana for a rare five, seven spider. And of course it has reach. It also has undergrowth. When you cast this spell, reveal the top <clears throat> X cards of your library, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. You may put a green permanent among them onto the battlefield. Uh, you may put a green permanent card with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I you think know, Commander we looking, decks are going to love that. Remember we were looking for a 7 drop to do a thing? Oh, right. Oh, hey. Okay, okay, okay. We don't have any green permanents in your graveyard by that. You don't want to ramp up necessarily right <clears> then. But yeah. if you're looking for 7 drops that do scary sure. things. I mean, okay. I mean, maybe. We'll see. But it's, it's like. Fine. Playing free permanence is playing free I mean, five, permanence. 5-7 reach is certainly also just mm -hmm. fine. That's yeah. a giant, giant butt. Yeah. Yeah, I think commander decks are really going to love this. This screams commander, the sort of genus wavy type effect, genesis wave type effect. Um, you know, it is important to know that it's any green permanent. It doesn't have to be a creature, so you can rip over, you know, an enchantment and you can play that. Planeswalker? Yeah, so I mean, there's some yeah. neat things you can do here. I just worry it's a little much for standard. I think that, like Ruben said, while we have ramp cards, none of them really put creatures in your bin. And the ramp decks typically run a few creatures anyways. Yeah. I seem to recall that a deck ran, I think you ran four of the um, uh, Zadi offshoots, just because they were zero threes with lifelink and so yeah. you know yeah you can ramp into it but you may not necessarily have creatures to fuel the undergrowth but fair yeah. enough i mean and this could just be good old-fashioned commander fun yeah. yeah i'm fine with that yeah. hitch claw recluse oh by the way for those who are curious play this in your seal decks yeah of course um and probably play this in your draft decks with yeah. your celestia because you can power it out because it's fantastic Hitchclaw Recluse, however, is the eat beady version. It's a green and two generic mana for a 1-4 reach. Good old horn turtle that blocks yeah. fires. We've seen this effect before. Uh, I think we may have actually seen this card before. Yes. Um, I don't know if it's under this name, but we certainly have 1-4 reach in green for two colorless. And I want to say it was from like Shadows or something like well, that. Well, we've had, I mean, it's been around since before Shadows. It's we've cert I think we had it in like Prophecy, if I'm recalling correctly. Jeez. There was a 1-4 a, a spider with reach in Prophecy. I'm Pretty sure. Fair enough. Either way, this is one of those middle of the road. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. You're going to get it late. You're not going to pick it early. You're going to get it anywhere. You're going to yeah. wheel the crap out of this card. You're probably going to get them super late. Mm -hmm. It's not an all-star. Mm -hmm. It's a 23rd card. It's a, you looked at your deck and you're like, oh my God, I can't stop flyers. So right. you made sure to put it in there. Or you have two copies because you have nothing against flyers and you want to stop them. Right. Which Celestia can be kind of weak too. Yes, yeah. they can. So it does its job. It's not quite... You know, the hatchery spider. It comes down way earlier, though. But it does come down way earlier. Impervious Great Worm. So, important to note that this will not be a card you open in any packs. No. this The only way you can get this card is to buy a booster box while your local friendly game store still has them. The buy a box promo for Guilds of Ravnica is Impervious Great Worm. It is three green and seven generic mana for a 1616 Mythic Worm with Convoke and Indestructible. Saffron Olive is already in his basement with the blueprints rolled out, yeah. trying to figure out how to make this thing work. This I mean, is the largest black bordered magic card that's ever been printed. Ever, ever. I mean, you know, there was one that, like, you know, took over planes and destroyed people's worlds and their minds and created an entire planes built for just existence. Right. Happens to be hanging out in the moon. Yeah. And then there's this worm thing. Which is slightly bigger. That gets bigger. blocked all day by Celestia tokens. Yep. It's just like, I got my 1-1. One, one. Ah! Although the, the animation for this one on in Magic Arena Ooh. is also quite good. Oh, yeah? It just comes out of the ground and, like, does this uh, at you for a little yeah. while. It's super cool. They slowed it down for the video because it's so B.A. Um <laughs> I'm serious. <clears throat> but uh, e either way, this is one of those that it's cool, it's fun, it's a very Timmy card. It's not going to hit Constructed. Please, dear God, don't want to hit Constructed. Right. Because you just don't want more Nexus of Fates to be happening. If only to stop people from complaining constantly would, yeah. be, would be my personal choice. Um, but, again, a giant dumb monster, cool. Yeah, fine. I'm all right with that. I mean, yeah, it outclasses me and we're cool or whatever, but yeah. sure. Iron Shell Beetle is next. It's a green and generic mana for a 1-1 one, one common insect when it enters the battlefield, but a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Yeah, we've had these before. We've had the, this card before, yeah. Nice. Um, it's fine. I want to say we had this in maybe Urza's Destiny or one of the Masks block sets, and it's been reprinted several times since. Sure. Um, Under card different is fine. names. Under different names as well, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Uh, card is fine. Um, it's not something I'm excited for. But it is a it is a grizzly bear at the very worst, right. and it can you know push an additional mentor trigger 
or do some other interesting things along those lines. Right, or just give your evasion creatures an extra bump. Like you yeah. want your flyer, your 2-3 three, your three vigilance flyer is now a 3-4, and that's right. really important. Usually this is going to be a 1-1, one, one, and it's going to make something else that matters yeah. bigger. Uh, in the meantime, you sort of have a chump blocker or somebody to use convoke with or yeah. whatever. You give the thing that doesn't have summoning sickness a boost, and then you stay behind a block, and you're, yeah. in many cases, you're happy to throw it in front of something because it did what it needed to do. Right. Much like a impervious <laughs> great bird. Right. This little insect. Stop this giant great yeah. one. Obviously, you want the come into play ability, and then the body <clears throat> that it leaves behind can be used for the severed strands or for your Vraska or any yeah, of that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Crawl Foragers is next. It's a green and four generic mana for a 4-4 four, four common insect scout, and it has undergrowth, and when it enters the battlefield, you gain one life for each creature card in your graveyard. Black green is known for being more of a grindy color combination, and especially if you have these sort of aggressive Boro strategies, or even the Celestia decks that get a good start, you know, this is a great way for the Golgari decks to kind of stabilize, where it's like, okay, I've survived the initial onslaught, onslaught, Let's get back some life here and let's do this because that's where the Golgari decks, you know, the mid to late game is where they really shine. Right. So this is a great kind of mid game stabilizer card. Um, obviously, if you're just throwing blockers in just to survive, you know, and you play this and you have a couple creatures again, just sort of playing magic naturally, staying alive. You're not even trying to fill undergrowth at that point. It just happens. Yeah. And then you play this on turn four or five if you any sort of ramp, and it's like, okay, I'm back in this. Let, let's play magic. This is another good one for the for the Guild Gate deck. Mm -hmm. Um, because you're just going to gain some incremental life gain after you've traded off your two drop and your three drop got killed and whatever. Um, just just a good Dirkwood board that gets you a couple extra points of life so you don't dirt, but die to burn spells. Uh, reminded me of there was a common in Theros that was a snake that had tribute. Uh, one of the Theros sets that had tribute. And uh, either your opponent let you gain life or it fought I something. I remember which one you're talking or, about. Yeah, I just can't remember the name. I forget what it sure. is. Yeah. But, but it's very, very similar. similar. Yeah, again, you want these kind of mid to late game cards that are like, you know what, My, I'm a mid to late game yeah. deck and you were the early aggressive deck and I have to not die here. Right. So it's a huge body that can block and attack, but it also, most importantly, brings you from like five life up to like nine I life. I always underestimate these cards. Crows and Druid from Dominaria was yeah. one that really stuck out to me. I was like, we, during our set review, we were like, why? Why does this have, why does this cost 10 to kick, why do you gain ten life? Why does it? Oh, sorry. Why does it cost eight to eight to kick? To kick, and, and it gains you ten life as a two three. What is this card doing? Turned out it was like the exact thing you wanted in all of those like yeah. Grand Grand decks. Decks. Yeah. green black kind yep. of sapperling whatever decks. Super cool. Crawl Harpooner. This card is not reasonable. No, it's a green yeah. and a generic mana for a three two uncommon insect warrior with reach. Why? It's already a three <clears throat> two for two with another keyword. Yes, it's already. Good. It's two mana, okay? Undergrowth, when it enters the battlefield, choose up to one target creature with flying you don't control. Crawl Harpooner gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Then you may have it fight that creature. So it's either Doomblade to kill a flyer, mm -hmm. or it's just a 3 2 for 2, both of which are great. Yes. Yeah, with reach. Which is fan freaking fantastic. I actually thought that this card was misprinted because <laughs> it's a 3 2 for 2. Yeah, I had to read it a couple times. Yeah. How, how like, most uh, trusty hyena or whatever that card was was a 3 2 for 2 with a drawback, not two positive. Abilities. Even the spider, so, yeah. we just got to uncovering a two colorless, one green, one four with right. reach, where it's like. This card is pushed. This yeah, card is really pushed to the point where I'm like, my God, could you do constructed with this? I mean, I think so. I mean, they, they pushed the hell out of it. Did. Like, they put every keyword they could. They made it fight something. If there's some huge monster flyer, it's going to kill it. I mean, on turn two, just to bring the bring the beats? Yeah. This brings the beats. Yeah, I think it's important to note that the, the fighting thing is a may. So if you yeah. see that you might lose that fight, you may not necessarily want to do that. And and again, you have the option. Like I said, you can just do, if you had a way to maybe give it haste, you can just take the buff and fly in. That's a thing. Um, and so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of options with this card. Yeah, this card's super sweet. Um, Might of the Masses is one green uncommon instant. Target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each creature you control. Celestia loves cards like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we've seen is not maybe I don't know if I don't know if this is a reprint, but we've definitely had this card text on a card before. For it sure. might be a reprint. Um, yeah, having a bunch of one ones isn't that great, but as soon as you turn one of those one ones into a seven seven, things get real. We're we're doing well there, um, and and yeah, this this effect in and of itself is obviously a payoff card. This is not the card you want if your deck is not going to work that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like you want to be in the go wide strategies. This is one of those sort of payoff cards that you get later in the draft, and you go, oh man, I was going wide, nobody else was. This is a payoff card for yeah. you, uh, and it usually blows out whatever blocks yeah. it. 
No hide Ferox. This card's weird. Aaron? Why? 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 I mean, this Why? feels like this. Okay, you know what this feels like? What's it feel like? When like, okay, so remember when you were a kid and you would do the game where like you'd lay the baseball bat all the way up, yeah. and you'd put your forehead on it, yep. and then you'd spin around and you'd like have to go somewhere. I feel like they just laid out random keywords, and then like someone in R and D spun around on the bat, and then they were like, "Hex proof." Uh, Not creatures. Uh, that. Well, that creature. That's right. what you do. You got like, it. <laughs> this this card definitely feels like a thought experiment. It's so random. Well, let's say let's tell you what it does. It's two green, two generic mana for a six six mythic beast with hexproof. You can't cast non-creature spells, so let's get that out of the way. Why? Two generic mana colon. No hide ferox loses all abilities until end of turn. Any player may activate this ability. Shout out to Mercadia Masks. Yeah. <laughs> if a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard Null Hide Ferox, put it onto the battlefield instead of putting it into your graveyard. Hello, Obstinate Bailoth. Right. I mean, so Obstinate Bailoth, Wilt Leaf Liege, locks it on Smiter, uh, has that text on What's it. up, Hollow One? How you doing? That's right. Feeling good about that goblin lore or whatever? <laughs> yeah. Feeling, feeling decent. Perfect. Jeez. Yeah, this card is, is something else. I mean, 6-6 six, six for 4 with Hexproof. I mean, in, that, and that's, in and of itself, that's the thing that it's doing most of the time. So this right. into Galta, maybe? Yeah, maybe. sure. I mean, th this is a very pushed card. And yes. yes, clearly there's a drawback. And I it's weird that it's the drawback from Arcadia Masks, but whatever, we'll, we'll run with it. Well, and you also can't cast non-creature spells, which in your mono-green Stompy deck, you're not really interested yeah, in doing well, much of anyway. Unless you pay two generic mana. Unless you pay two generic mana. And then it loses all the abilities, right. which is a thing. So anybody can do that. Correct. Um, but... As just a generic, like, yeah, you want to spend your turn turning off all these abilities and then using a removal spell? Yeah. Okay. Essentially has that, like, Frost Titan style yeah, right. ability on it. Yeah, it's just, it's worded strangely, which is weird. Sure. It, it, it kind of puts some controls on you, but you get the benefit of having a 6-6 six, six Hexproof, which is nice. Yeah. Um, and at, in, you know, at instant speed, you're like, well, I got this pump spell, so I'm going to pay two to turn it off, then I'm going to pump the thing and whatever. Sure. It's weird. This card is just a card's oddity. real good, though. Cards like, insane let's see. and limited. Let's be let's clear. Be, yeah. They have to have the removal spell. Then they have to have the mana to turn it off right. and play the removal spell. This is going to eat through creatures in the meantime. Yeah. yeah. The last paragraph may not be terribly relevant and sealed, um, but the first three certainly are. Yeah. You know, like Ruben said, if you're playing this card, you're probably not casting a lot of non-creature spells anyways. The Hexproof is serviceable. It can block. It can attack. Yeah, definitely play this in limited. Yeah, this feels... But ultimately, this feels like a constructed card. Yeah. Honestly, I think just because of the last little paragraph. Yeah. yeah. I, I think this is a anti-hollow one, anti-discard-your-stuff deck card. Liliana of the Veil, vale, Burning Inquiry, all, all right. that kind of stuff. Oh, th thank you, Liliana. You know? Right. Sure. Pax Favor is next. It's a green and two generic mana for a common instant that has Convoke, and target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. I seem to recall the last core set that Convoke was in, there was a version that was like a 2-2 two -two with Convoke, and I played the heck out of that. Yeah. So yeah, cards like this absolutely see play. Yeah. You know, you declare blocks, and then in response, tap everything, and then whoop. And yeah. Yeah. I love instants with Convoke because you get to tap out. Yes. yes. Um, being a, being tapped out and playing a combat trick with your Convoke is a huge blowout every single time. You're able every to time. Because they, they think the shields are down. Yeah. And con Convoke means the shields are not down. And that can just mean blow out city for you. Yeah. When they just start like tapping all the creatures and you're like, oh God, oh God, here it comes. Pax favor. Pause for reflection. Pause. Pause for reflection. Reflect. Pause for Reflection is a green and two generic mana common instant that has Convoke, and you prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. This is an interesting fog variant because it, it encourages you to have creatures in play, which the fog decks don't. But if the thing, you know, we've mentioned that Celestia can be weak to flyers. Sure. So there's things that, you know, maybe just throwing your 1-1 one, one in front of something is not going to be enough. God help you if your 16-16 suddenly is trample. Your 1-1s one, aren't going to be enough, but they are enough to cast this thing that will buy you one more turn or something. So I think it's a neat take on this. Yeah. yeah. I'm I also think of the green white mirror match, right? This isn't a card necessarily main deck. Sure. But in the world of swingy versus swingy versus swingy versus get you versus get you, yeah. you know, I have this to prevent all the combat damage on your turn can easily turn into then I untap and kill you. You've also covered sort of the guild gate decks which were known for playing walls and so yeah, that's another thing true. that you tap all your walls, there you go. Right. This this is the magic card I think that has the Art that looks most like it should be on a land. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's I mean, I absolutely think it's, gorgeous. It's great. Um, 
But again, you know, don't be don't be picking this thing early. You're going to get this no. as a pass out. You're yep. going to get this super late. Play it in your sideboard. Only put it in your main deck when you have a reason to do so. Yep. This is not a default use spell, in my opinion. Pelt Collector is dumb. This yeah. card is ridiculous. This card's absurd. One green for a rare 1-1 one, one Elf Warrior. Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, if that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector's, put a plus one, plus one counter on Pelt Collector. As long as Pelt Collector, Pelt, <laughs> Pelt Collector has three or more plus one, plus one counters on it, it has trample. Good God Almighty. Grim Flayer has seen play. It's very reminiscent, reminiscent of that. There was Warden of the First Tree. You know, yeah. it's not uncommon. It, it, there's, there's... There's, there are a series of creatures out there that start off as just one mana things yeah. and then get very, very big. And this does not seem hard to turn on or activate at all. Much yeah. better than Experiment 1, yeah. which saw standard play. Mm -hmm. um, you can put plus one, plus one counters on it in other ways, such oh, yeah. as with Mentor. Um, gird and the so, Birds. Yeah. Gird the Birds, exactly gird, right. Gird. <laughs> I mean, th this is a card that just has it coming and going, literally. This is experiment two, yep, if you will, and it's a so I just better. this might also pair nicely with the the macabre thing where it's like there's your one drop, there's your two drop, there's sure. your three drop. Where are the powers? Okay, cool. So the one drop gets first, right? Put in the two drop, put in the three drop. Perfect. Counters, awesome. Have a good time. Yeah, the, the pros are going nuts over this card, and they're <laughs> saying this card is absolutely bananas, and I believe them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a card that can get out of control super fast, and they couldn't make it any cheaper. Port Cullis Vine is next. It's a one green O3 common plant wall with Defender. Two generic mana tap and sacrifice a creature with Defender colon. Draw a card. Take the long way home. Yeah. So if the Defender deck is a thing, if, well, that's a big if, but if the Defender deck is a thing with Arcades and Gleaming Barrier and Suspicious Bookcase, it's because Port Cullis Vine is good. This is the card draw engine. You need this card specifically mm -hmm. to work in that deck. Um, that might be possible. Um, you know, I think it's probably going to require some additional uh, card advantage because mm -hmm. Arcades and Port Colors Vine by themselves are both fairly fragile and require to be sitting in play for a little while before you can you either have to untap with Arcades or wait until Port Colors Vine doesn't have uh, summoning sickness anymore. Right. And so that's a, that's a bit of an awkward uh, needle to have to thread, but they've given you the pieces and that's certainly worth exploring. I mean, the idea in Limited for you to be able to play this on turn one and then turn seven when it doesn't matter anymore and you've right. got a bunch of creatures just looking to do stuff, two mana, sack it, draw a card, that is fantastic. That allows you to have the best of both worlds. Don't get run over early and get advantage late. Mm -hmm. So most of these walls, like Wall of, uh, what was the one in M19 or or was it Dominaria? It was like one green for an O3 or one green for an O4. Oh, Wall of Vines. Wall yeah. of Vines was just like... Awful. Right. And this is not. So yeah. it, it has reach and defender as opposed to this one, which Just doesn't has. have reach, but is a card draw engine in and of itself. And I'll take the card draw engine. Oh, for Thank sure. you. Uh, this is not a card. Don't play a ton of these in your sealed deck, but I would be happy with like a one of if you have a lot yeah. of great late game bombs. Uh, this isn't a card I probably want to play in my draft decks. I want to sideboard it in against the aggressive decks right. because, again, you have the bonus of coming, you know, coming and going. However, if you're in Celestia and you need cards to convoke, this yeah. is a great one. Yep, absolutely. Prey Upon is next. A nice. Oft reprinted card. One green common sorcery. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't. Yeah, they've pretty much established that this is sort of Green's version of creature removal. You know, we do get this in so many sets. And I mean, it works. You know, I, I, I just can't imagine anything really better for Green. Um, yeah. yeah. Just, just imagine magic without fighting, okay? Because there was a world where that didn't happen. And it was not that long ago. Yeah. No. no I mean, we only got Prey Upon in Innistrad? We got yeah. Prey Upon in Innistrad. Yeah. It actually works. It can work well with the, you know, we mentioned the creatures that have like little power, bigger toughness. You know, those tend to make better prey targets because they can fight and take more than, you know, they're probably dishing out or that they're going to receive. And right. so, yeah. Very nice. So this is a card. Always, always pick it early. Yeah. Always play it. It's super good. Prey yeah. Upon's always been great. It needs to be in the right kind of deck, though. Not every deck is a Prey Upon deck. Yeah. Uh, that's fair. But I still like playing it. Most of the green decks are, though. Yeah. Right. Speaking of, Siege Worm is back, ladies and gentlemen. Hasn't been seen since the original Ravnica. Two green, five generic mana for a common 5-5 five, five worm with Convoke and Trample. Oh, yeah. I think every time... This was also in the core set that had Trample or Convoke in it, right? Mm, was it? M15, yes. I think yes, they okay. had this. So every time Convoke has been printed, Siege Worm has been printed. Gotcha. And with good reason. This is the... It's great. The, the, this is the bread and butter C, uh, uh, Convoke card. It's a common. It's a big body. It allows you to be tall as well as wide. Good Very good upon target. Yeah. Great <laughs> upon target. This is... This card is like... It's just... 
it's one of those like perfectly costed cards. Yep. It's just perfect. It's you want to have seven permanents that it takes to get out on the board. It's very relevant with the five power and five, five toughness. It's very reminiscent of Ravnica. It's great that we could come back and it's still here, which yeah. is really neat. Um, and the same power level. This is the same power level today as it did 12, 13 yep. years ago. That's amazing. This is not hard to get out on turn five. A little difficult to get on turn four, but reasonable. Like, you can still do it. Not impossible. Not impossible. you got to go one drop, two drop, three drop, and then this is your four drop. Right. Um, but still, I mean, even on turn five, turn six, even just as tapping for seven, it's a reasonable body. It is a scary, scary creature. Uh, it is possible, from previous experience, it is possible to wheel Siege Worms, and when you do, you know green is open. Yeah. So... Yeah, this card is real. Um, it's one of those cards that, you know, you don't necessarily want to jam it into every single deck, but if you're in the Celestia you're in the Go Wide, this is a payoff card. This is a congratulations, you know, here's what you get as a yeah. result of playing this guild. Sprouting Renewal is next, a green and two generic mana for an uncommon sorcery with Convoke. And you choose one. Don't we just love choosing things? Mm -hmm. Create a 2-2 green and white elf knight creature token of vigilance or destroy target artifact or enchantment. Sweet. Awesome card. Usually going to be a 2-2, two, two, but it's able to take out equipment. It's able to take out relevant enchantments. Yeah. Which, great. Just which a great is a great card. Thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, the choices are what you always want. Yeah. And the choice of Naturalize or 2-2 two, two with Vigilance, yeah. that's fantastic. You know, and, and the Convoke, I mean, the cost is just so low, too, and agree. You know, we talked about the Siege Worms and the there was the Big Flyer. You know, we've seen some really obscene, you know, Convoke costs where it's like you're probably still going to have to pay mana. You very well could pay nothing for this, in yeah. theory. You could very well just have three creatures and it's free. Like, that's... I like seeing more of the reasonable Convoke cards, like the Pump Spell and things like that. They don't all have to be so far out of reach. Right. And this this spell is just terrific. You know, you take yeah. your three creatures, you tap, 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 you get a free 2-2. Two -two. That sounds awesome. I'm good with that. Urban Utopia is next. A green and a generic mana for a common enchantment aura. Enchant land. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. And enchanted land has tap at one mana of any color. Yeah, cards like this tend to see play in sort of enchantress style decks. You know, in modern, you know, people always try to make enchantress a thing. You know, any kind of ramp, you know, Utopia Sprawl sees play in the Ponza decks and the Death Cloud decks. You know, this is one of the versions that replaces itself and fixes your mana. So this is something that, you know, if ramping is your game or you need to hit a certain kind of color of mana, this is what you want to be doing. Yeah, and, the, and it replaces itself, mm -hmm. which is a huge deal. Well, the Seder in M19. Yeah. Uh, where you draw a card whenever you play an enchantment spell. Well, here you go. You get to draw two in that case. Perfect. And this is the type of card that fits perfectly in those engine decks that once they get up and running, they just go out of control. Cards like that also come <coughs> for here if you have to be playing Ascend, or if you're playing Construction Sun, you know, the City's Blessing. Things like this add up. Yeah. I've always traditionally, even when back to Return of Ravnica, when we were like, uh, I think it was Gift of Paradise was in Return of yeah. Ravnica? Uh, no, yeah, not in, it, Gift of Paradise was not in Return of Ravnica, oh. but there was something... Something similar. You're on, you're on the court. All right. You're on the court. I don't there know you. where I am. All right. So this is one of those cards that traditionally I have underrated. Mm. And I have always been like, you know, don't play this in your deck. It's not worth it. Right. Actually, I'm just going to say, you know what? This card's probably fantastic. Yeah. And fixes yeah. your mana perfectly yeah. and replaces itself and is great to do on turn two and all that good stuff. Yeah. I think that uh, uh, Abundant Growth was in Return to Ravnica, which cost a green and you had to sacrifice to draw a card. I think that was Addison Restore. Might have been Addison, Addison Restore. Yeah. It was somewhere. Gift of, Gift of somewhere Paradise was a great game Gift three. Of, it was game three. And it had taps for two. Correct. That was a fantastic spell in Return to Ravnica. Was it in Return to Ravnica? Because oh, it, yeah. it was just in M19 and I love it there. And it was just in Amonkhet and I loved it there. I so. remember it classically because me and me and Brad had spoken of it. Oh, we were okay. just crapping all over it and both right. of us had it in our decks yeah. when we were building our sealed. And we're like, you got this? And he's like, yeah, it's like, totally yeah. great. And he's like, yeah, yeah that's totally great. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, this one doesn't ramp you from three to five, but we got enough lockets that it doesn't matter. Absolutely. Vicar Spore Worm is a green and five generic mana, six, four common worm with undergrowth. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gains vigilance and gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard, and it can't be blocked by more than one creature. Yeah, this is another wow. one of those yeah. kind of devotion-esque tricks, you know, that reminds me of devotion. You know, when it enters the battlefield, you know, you can take a creature that doesn't have summoning sickness and it gets really, really big and has vigilance. And so um, the fact that it can only be blocked by one creature, you know, can be relevant. Um, you know, wow. so it's fine. This card's kind of kind of great. Yeah. This card is great. In that, 
you know, mid range, yeah. late game. I think very Golgari focused archetype. It's terrific. Like there's a reason it gives the creature vigilance. It's so you don't get run over on the crackback right. because that's what that deck is weak to. It's just getting hurt really, really early and they can't stabilize. Yeah. This is the perfect type of stabilization effect because again, had it just pumped for plus X plus X, that might not be good enough. You'll get put in situations where you can't swing right. because you can't have a tapped creature. And this fixes that. Also, one of the very few six drops that I've seen and I'm just like, I would play multiples of this because mm -hmm. the second one gets you the first one. So yeah, which is terrific. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, this is a card that I could definitely see playing multiples depending on the deck. Like two. I mean, I, you don't I want to put too many six drops in your deck. Obviously, right. But. I, I want to have the right sort of Golgari mid rangey sure. thing going on. Um, I don't think it's bad to play just as a one of as the end of your curve and your sealed mm -hmm. deck. Yeah, of course. Um, or even in your draft deck because again, you're just playing magic, which makes undergrowth work. Vivid Revival is next. It's a green and four generic mana for a rare sorcery that returns up to three Assassin's Trophies. I'm sorry. That returns <laughs> up to three target multicolored cards from your graveyard to your hand, and then you exile Vivid Revival. Well, that's that's the constructed implication. That is the constructed implication. In in uh, Limited, this is the card I want for the Guild Gate deck. Again, yeah, you do. Um, because it's just draw the three best cards. You've played this game most of the time. Probably. Like, return your Guild Mage. Even then, I mean, your removal spell and your your crackling Drake or whatever. Sure, I mean, I'm still playing this as Golgari. I'm still oh, playing sure. this as Celestia. For sure, like this is still probably going to draw you three great cards yeah. for the price of five mana. Restock was playable in limited uh, as a five mana return. Seasons two. past, saw play. obviously seasons past. Yep, as a huge, huge engine. Right. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if Vivid Revival makes the crossover to Constructed like uh, some of them can. Um, but you know what? A three for one ain't nothing to sneeze at. I'll, I'll take those assassins trophies back to my sure. hand. Get you, get you, get you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, but again, for me, in limited, there's so much awesome multicolor cards in this set. If you're in green and you're then you're playing multicolor spells. Right. It's Ravnica. This card's probably fantastic. Wary Okapi. 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 Thank you. Uh, Okapi. Well, I've never read the sure word. All right. Wary. Okapi. Now, careful now. Don't Okapi. be trying to Okapi a feel. Hey. Wow. Wary Okapi is a green and two generic mana for a 3-2 common antelope with vigilance. If you play quasi-duplicate, you get an Okapi copy. How many Okapis of this would you play? Oh, my God. This card's bad. <laughs> It's not, fine. It's, not, it's not that bad. It's a Warpath Ghoul it's with a Warpath Vigilance. Ghoul. I would play a single O'Copy. Like I would play, yeah. I would play one O'Copy yeah. of O'Copy. Okay. Okay. One, one O'Copy yeah. of O'Copy is about Got it, because it helps out with Convoke. It's there on the curve. You need a three drop, but now you I don't have, want... I have to be a Zoology nerd real quick, because technically O'Copy are not antelopes. What are they? They are a different genus or species. I didn't even know that was aren't. a real animal. It's a real animal. I've heard of Okampa from watching Star Trek. O'Copies mm -hmm. are... You'll, you'll see them at the zoo. If you go to the zoo, they're near the giraffes. They're very similar because they're copies of each other. Right. All right. <laughs> Wild Saratok is next. It's a green and three generic mana for a 4-3 common rhino. Good. Great. Good. It's an order of the sacred bell. Yeah. Vanilla 4-3. Yeah, there's the shout out to That's Kamigawa. That's what I'm talking about. 4-3s for 4 are traditionally fine. Um, like, you're, you're not going to kick it out of bed for eating Cheetos. It did fine work at the pre I don't know if that would fit in my bed, but... Well, he, he's a little horny. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. This card did fine work at the pre pre release, again, as just a good old fashioned monster. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to run a, a ton of these. You don't want to pick a ton it's of a these curve early. Filler. Yeah. Yeah. It Brings the rhino fun. creature type back into standard. Uh, hasn't been around for a little while, but rhinos are native to Ravnica as a plane. Remember, horn collars chant last time. Very nice. And speaking of the 4 4 trample rhino tokens that we had last time, originally the five mana. Divine, replace your tokens with angels, mm -hmm. made rhinos instead. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they took all the rhino tokens out of the set and then just decided to give it a complete upgrade with all those angel tokens. I see. Okay. All right, we can't. We're done with the mono green cards. Now it's time to go to Celestia. Oh boy, Assure and Assemble is the rare Celestia split cards. Uh, they are both instants, thankfully, so you don't have to worry about what timing they are. There you go. <coughs> Excuse me, Assure is two Celestia mana, two green or two white in any combination. It is a rare instant that puts a plus one plus one counter on target creature, and that creature gains indestructible until end of turn. 
pairs really nicely with the the crawl that we mentioned at the ETB in the fight, where if you have a cup, it, it, it only costs two mana, so it's like two mana, you get extra two laying around. I right. ah, here's this really big thing that's fighting, and it's not dying. Right. Like, that's really good. A symbol, however, is the hotness. It's a green, a white, and four generic mana for an instant that creates three, two, two, green and white elf knight creature tokens with vigilance. Yeah. Six mana, six power, six toughness, three bodies, instant speed. Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Gideon's Intervention, or whatever, not Gideon's Intervention, but Gideon's Make a Bunch of Two Twos. I forget what that card was called. Whatever it was. Uh, six mana for six power, six toughness across three bodies at instant speed. That's a huge deal. Um, there's lots of overrun style effects, lots of anthem effects. In you could even well. then turn around and use those three to convoke into, yeah. if you had that the thing with the two in the green that was create another token or destroy an enchantment. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's a thing too. Like, creatures are mana when Celestia are around. Yep. Oh, man. This this card excites me more about the assemble side versus Assure. Uh, Assure's good. Don't get me wrong. It's not like it's bad. Right. It just feels like one of the lesser type effects that I agree. you get out of the rares. It is a good counter spell to be able to deal with a, a Doom Blade or mm -hmm. a Burn spell against right. a good two or three drop. Right. But and then once you get to six, you're going to be wanting to make a bunch of tokens. For sure. For sweet. Camaraderie is next. Green, white, four generic mana for a rare sorcery. You gain X life and draw X cards where X is the number of creatures you control. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Holy God, this is a limited bomb. Yeah. Oh boy. So there was a card in Mercadian Masks called oh. Collective Unconsciousness. Mm -hmm. It cost four colorless green green and was a sorcery. And you uh, drew X cards where X is the number of creatures you control. And that card was good enough. This one gains you X life and draws you the cards and they get plus one plus one. This is a huge upgrade over a card that was already a bomb mm -hmm. in an old limited format. An old limited format. A new limited format, we get uh, we get some cray crack. Yeah. Is what we get because this card is nuts. Yeah. Uh, this is the curve topper. You, I mean, you're putting out all these one one soldiers with lifelink, two two knights with vigilance. Uh, this is, and this this just makes them all bananas. This is how you end it. You go, I guess I'll draw seven and gain seven, and all my guys are bigger, so smash your face. Yeah. Okay. Pretty yeah. absurd. This is a super bomb rare. This is one of the rares that you open that says, hey, you should play Celestia in this draft. Yeah. You should think about it. Absolutely. It seems good because this card is dumb. Centaur Peacemaker is a fantastic little creature. It's a green and white and generic mana for a 3-3 common centaur cleric. When it enters the battlefield, each player gains four life. If you don't want to die to early rushes, right. a 3 mana 3-3 three, three is great. Yeah. yeah, you're giving them four life, but you're but also cares? getting four life. Yeah. Especially, I mean, this one is, is tailor-made for the control style decks, the gate deck, or the slower three-color kind of decks that have a Celestia base in it. Um, we had Centaur Healer, which gained you three life, but sometimes gaining both players four life is better. Right. Um, reminds me of a, uh, a card from Hearthstone, actually, that also gained both players four life and was better than the gain three life yourself other option that you had. Um, just in certain metagames, you, that extra point is relevant, right. and, and who knows how the draft format's going to shake out. Right. More of that autumn setting. Yeah. Oh, it's a gorgeous card. Absolutely. Um, but again, this is one of those cards that can feel bad in some scenarios. Like, I don't want to give them four life. I've been working to kill them. But right. Like, yeah, but you also get benefit out of it. And it's a 3-3 three, three for three, which is nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Another one that's going to go in that gate archetype. Yeah. For sure. You're to sort of branch out, be able to play a bunch of craziness. Branch out. Put one on the board for Aaron. Oof. Oof. Uh, otherwise, for limited, I'm happy to play this in my sealed decks. I'm happy to play this in my Celestia decks yeah. that I draft. I mean, it's a 3-3 um, three, three for 3, even if you're giving your opponent's life. Like, who cares? Whatever, man. I'm just yeah. going to take This is about board control. It. Life totals are a resource. Right. So. Conclave Cavalier. The XXYY of the Celestia Conclave. For two green and two white, you get a 4-4 four, four uncommon centaur knight with vigilance, and when it dies, it creates two 2-2 two, two green and white elf knight creature tokens with vigilance. This card is bananas. Yeah, elf coil engine, as it was referred to on Scryfall. Nice. Wow. Uh, just a really extremely powerful card, mm -hmm. um, where you crack open the centaur, and it turns out the centaur was actually two people in a centaur suit. Like the, the whole Russian time. doll centaur? Yeah. Yeah. They were like, lol, really? You, you, have the, you have like the donkey costume that you went to the Halloween party yeah. in, and then they like snap apart. Yeah, right. very, very... Uh, Three, 
three gnomes in a trench coat style of card. Uh, just a really good card. It's a 4-4 four, four for four that has a dies trigger and has another keyword. Just a really good card. This card Vigilance is... Vigilance being sorry. relevant with Celestian cards, you know, it can attack, block, and then you can tap it and get a mana. This is one of the 4-4s four that's going to be a big crux point in the limited environment. This is the reason why Lava Coil is so insane. Uh, you don't get the die trigger. Because you don't get the die trigger. Right. Um, there's a bunch of 4-5s and there's a bunch of... Uh, uh, there's a couple of, of things that trade up with this, but this card is just so powerful that it's going to warp the entire format around it. Yeah, this card is super duper duper good. And uh, again, there's so much fixing in this format between the lockets and uh, all the guild gates. Like, I didn't see anyone have any problems casting this at all at any time during the weekend or the pre pre release. This card is very, very good. Nice. Conclave Guild Mage is a green and a white mana for a 2 2 uncommon elf cleric. For one green tap, creatures you control gain trample until on the turn, or for a white. And five generic mana, you create a 2-2 green and white elf knight creature token with vigilance. Nice 16-16 you got there with no trample. Right. <laughs> I, I, One green. I think this That's is the all. worst guild mage. I think. Probably. Six is a lot for a 2-2. It's a lot. And green. A trample? There's a lot of dumb things in this set that I mean, don't sometimes have. Matters. Not in green white. The under, I know, but the undergrowth worm. Oh, sure. That yeah. was a 6-4. Yeah, you're 6-4. Your lot with giants, yeah. your your uh, your haste undergrowth yeah, scavenger. There's a lot of big dumb things that sure. just don't want to be running in the Celestia tokens. That's fair. Yeah. yeah, if you've got if you've got your seven five hexproof convoke guy, uh, this can give that thing trample. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm still very tempted to take this for any time I open a guild mage. I'm going to be very tempted to just go in that guild mm -hmm. and go guild mage. Right. Um, the guild mages are beautifully designed in this yeah. set because they do literally exactly what you want to do in the guild in which they are yep. in. Like, yeah, you're like, creatures green, trample, what? You're like, no, no, go back and look at all the Celestia cards and all the stupidly huge things that don't have trample, like that Hexproof right. Convo guy for nine mana. Yep. This is exactly what you want to do. And if you have a big board stall, what do you want? You want more you want creatures trample. to power out more Convoke convo spells. Right. Exactly what you want to do. And I love that yeah. about this set. And it Every is, it is a huge mage. mana sink. This is an Urza's Factory in the Celestia decks. And mm -hmm. so um, it, it is by no means a bad card. It is, it's just of the five, you know, it's the least talented Baldwin brother. You know what I mean? <laughs> Does that make sense? But they're all Baldwin It's brothers. the Stephen Baldwin you're, of But you're still mages. a Baldwin yeah, brother. Right. Like, we're not, we're not not casting you in the movie. <laughs> but but this is one of the, one of the lesser guild mages. Sure. They're all still great. Um, this is a card I would not necessarily first pick, uh, but I would definitely be rewarded for being in Celestia sure. where no one else is by getting this third or fifth pick. Yeah. This is also a sign that Celestia is open and maybe you should play the green-white go-wide strategy. Amara, Soul of the Accord. Praise Amara is good. She's really good. She's a green and white for a 2-2 rare legendary elf cleric. Whenever she becomes tapped, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with lifelink. So... Seems Wizards of the Coast realized their mistake that first of all they printed Imara as they a five so seven dirty. for seven, yeah. which canonically and doesn't make any sense. She's got a bit of a glow up. Look how fine she is. Yeah. Well, yeah. When you glow up, you know, so you got to glow up sometime. Wow. Um, she's she's never been a a character in the story that warranted five power and seven toughness and seven mana. Yeah. So the story goes that it and vo her and Voice of Resurgence swapped spots at the, last right. at the last minute to try to make Celestia better because Voice of Resurgence was Amara and therefore was legendary. Yeah. So they made Voice of Resurgence a card that you could play multiples of in the same turn. Well, we were also in a format crawling with control. You yes. know, like the control decks with Detention Spheres and Supreme Verdicts and Sphinx's Revelation. It was really meant to stifle those decks too. Right. Yeah. And... In the process of doing that, they kind of ruined the lore a mm -hmm. little bit of Amara. So in my mind, I've just replaced that in terms of, in a Vorthos sense. Sure. That she was always a 2-2 two, two for 2, and this is just the new version of the 2-2 two, two for 2. This and, is the fix. And this is no Voice of Resurgence, but in the Convoke strategy, it is better. She would have been great with vehicles. Like, can you imagine putting her in, like... Oh my god. You know, just anything. Let her drive the car? Right. Unbelievable. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. Be yeah. so good. That would be terrific. This is a card that is fantastic. Always play in your sealed decks if you're in these colors. Easy first pick for me to say, you know what? I want to do the Celestia thing this time because you have the best enabler there is. Yeah. It doesn't even do anything to make creatures. You can just attack and make creatures. You can convoke and make creatures. Amara is terrific. I look forward, I look forward to her and Shauna getting together and constructed. Mm. Like, yeah. Nice. That's a nice one. Yeah. Next up is Flower and Flourish. This is the uncommon split card for a Celestia mana, green or white. Wait, it doesn't give you energy? It's bad. Oh, it's crap. 
For a Celestia mana, green or white, it is a uncommon sorcery that searches your library for a basic plains or forest to reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Or for a green, a green, a green, a white. <laughs> yes, queen. Yes, queen. <laughs> <laughs> so a green, a white, and four generic mana. It is a uncommon sorcery. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two until end of turn. It's fine. Overrunish. It's fine. Yeah, I mean it's you fine. can you can literally play one less land in your green white deck if you have a flower and flourish mm-hmm. because it will always be a land. Right. Um, if you need it to be, and it has the upside of if you have six mana, then it's something else. Right. Yeah. Um, there have been a couple of these in the past. I think that there was literally a green white split card that did this exact thing. The first, the first half of it, right? Uh, yeah, the first I half. Think so from Return of Ravnica. From Return to Ravnica, and then of course there's Lay of the Land and Attune with Ether and other ones that have upside on them. Right. Um, but having that as half the split card certainly worth half of a split card. The other side of the overrun effect, huge deal, especially when you're convoking out multiple life linkers and vigilance creature is just a great card. Just remember that first half is so powerful they banned it. <laughs> they banned it. The, mm, not Evan, not necessarily for the right, ability, more for the that's... more for the energy. Okay. I like that you went flower and flowish. Flower. Uwu. Uwu queen. Uwu flower. Yes, queen. Queen, a queen mana. Search your wife well. We <laughs> Love. Two. Two. Love is a plains and a forest. Ah, oh, the Plains of Forest. Join Shields is next for a green, a white, and three generic mana. It is an uncommon instant. Untap all creatures you control. They gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn, and your opponent begins cursing right Sad, about them. Sadness. Right this, is a, this is a heck of a thing. Um, I, I have played a card called Thought Weft Gambit. Oh, yeah. Um, which was four colorless, blue, white, blue, white, uncommon from one of the Eventide? Eventides. I think it was Eventide, Eventide. Where it was tap all creatures your opponents control, untap all creatures you control. And so having this effect, even though it looks really expensive, this card is a limited bomb. I remember walking into and in Return Around and got Rootborn Defenses was all yeah. the rage. And so you would just be oh, like, I can't Lord. tell you how many times I walked into that card. It's been like, oh. It is ridiculous. It is a monster bomb. It, it, is... it, it ruins combat for your opponent. Once your opponent knows you have it, they are nervous <laughs> constantly. Mm-hmm. Because as soon as you, this is like Ray of Command in yeah. Limited on steroids. This is a thought left game. Like, untap all creatures. Bad enough, right? We're already ruining combat with that. Then they gain Hexproof, so you're also ruining your opponent's kill spells. And they gain Indestructible, so you're ruining your opponent's Wraths. So what, And the ability to kill your creatures at to all. To do anything. So yeah. what, what, what is a Control Mage to do in the face of such reckless hate? Counter it. I guess so. I counter that's spell. the only you option. Counter spell. This card is really, really good. This card is bananas. This is one of those payoff uncommons. Uh, this isn't necessarily the card I want to first pick because it yeah. relies on you already being deep into the strategy. Right. But if you're deep into the strategy, A, you're going to be able to get this later anyway because people who aren't are not necessarily going to want it. But when you're the green, wide, right. green, white, wide deck, it's... It's ridiculous. And if it turns out that the Celestia deck is not the best, but second or third best, Mm -hmm. then it is possible to first pick Joint Shields. Sure. Um, Because, you know, if it's the most popular, obviously multiple people are going to be trying to be in that that archetype and you're going to be fighting with a lot of people. But if it's second or third, if it's like Blue Red Wizards in Dominaria, where you can pretty much guarantee that only one drafter at the table is going to be in that archetype, Mm -hmm. or if it's like the Red Black Control deck in Dominaria... Um, then, then if it's if it's around that level of popularity, you can force force once you open the joint shields and decide this is where I want to go. I would not be excited to first pick a joint shield. I'd be very excited to like third pick a joint shield after I've already picked up a couple of green and white cards. Nice. Well, that's that. Next up, oh boy, Knight of Autumn is a white, a green, and a generic mana for a two-one rare dryad knight. When it enters the battlefield, choose one of these awesome things. Put two plus one plus one counters on it. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, or you gain four life. So it's a lone missionary, it's a reclamation sage, and it's a hurl- a, a pouncing serp apart. Modern is stoked about this, you know, for sideboard reasons. Yeah. You know, we talked a little bit earlier about how... You can main deck this. You can even main deck this. The Coco decks, Todd Stevens has been championing a Bant mid-range deck for a while. Um, you know, it, it's, it just does everything you want to be doing. It's good against the burn decks, it's good against affinity. It's just sometimes if you need a body, that's the thing. This is really, really good and will no doubt see standard play. Absolutely. Oh, if not even modern play. Mm-hmm. And possibly mm-hmm. legacy. <clears throat> possibly. It just it does everything. This is the Swiss Army Knight. You know great what I'm saying? Like, for this is totally possible. It's ridiculous. Yeah, this card is, is great. 
This is one of those they just kept putting stuff on it. Yeah. And you're like, okay, fine, I'll <laughs> yeah. play it. If you thought choose one, naturalize, make a tutu was good, yeah. how about choose one, all of these things? Yeah. This, this is the, and also we stapled a 2-1 body onto this. We talked about with, uh, with mission into briefing. It, yeah. yeah. And, and so that extra 2-1 is super relevant. Yeah, green Working with creatures, creatures yeah. reanimating creatures versus being on a spell. Yep. All those things matter. And this card is just pushed. Yep. It's just great. Ladev Champion is a green, white, and a generic mana for a 2-2 uncommon elf knight. Whenever it attacks, you may tap any number of untapped creatures you control. It gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each creature tapped this way. White, green, and three generic mana colon create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with lifelink. So instead of creatures convoking, creatures are buffing? That's yeah. really neat. Oh, it's yeah. terrific. And they've had cards like this before. Right. Sort of an exalted sort kind of. of effect. Kind of like a uh, topan ascetic kind Was of effect. Was that the one for that was the one from That's Sharks. what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it had this exact ability. Similar. Topan Ascetic had tap, <clears throat> colon, gets plus one, plus one. Sure. This is you have to do it all at the same time. You right. can't do it on defense. But it also comes with the handy dandy pay five, make a creature, which yeah, is a huge deal as well. It's just it's just tacked on. It's just one of those you're like, really? Yeah. Like that's what like There seem to at. be a lot of really good mana sinks in Celestia for you to have your aggressive start. Mm -hmm. And then later when you have too much mana. Oh, well, we've got Guild Mage, we've got Champion, we've got the White Enchantment that when you gain life, you draw a bunch of cards or can make a, a lifelink token. Right. All, all a bunch of stuff like that. It's infinite like that, which is yeah. great. And also note that all the elf creature tokens are with Vigilance. So yeah. you can attack and then decide to tap them for right. this guy. The el yeah, exactly. The elves have Vigilance, the One Ones have lifelink, and they're just all relevant abilities. Absolutely. So this card is super good. You're always going to play it. Pick it early, play it in Celestia deck. Mm -hmm. Sweet. March of oh, the Jesus. multitude. This card is not fair. <laughs> this card is this card scares me quite this simply. Is Sphinx's convocation. Yeah, it does. It's a white, a white, a green, an X for a mythic instant that has convoke, and you create X one one white soldier creature tokens with life link at instant speed with every permanent you have, and it's insane. Yeah, the card is very Which good. Which you can then say you do this at the end of someone's turn. You then untap it at the start of your turn and cast your Loxodon, and then using all yeah. of those creatures as mana, and then all of them get tokens. You know, Ruben, you like to say about Sphinx's Revelation that one kind of leads to another. This yeah. could be very easily in standard. Absolutely. One, you make a bunch of tokens. You then convoke them to make even more tokens. This is scary. Remember when they tried to make that zombie maker with Delve? Was like, what, four black XX or whatever? Oh, yeah, Empty the Pits? Yeah. Empty the Pits, yeah. And they were just like, oh, we're not, we're not sure. We're gonna... This one, they're like, you're going to play it. Right. We're seriously <laughs> pumping the crap out of this. You're seriously going to play this. This scary is a scary card. This yeah, is going to be a lovely. standard card. It, yeah. It's um, happening. Exactly. Really good with uh, with a couple of, of other cards that exist, like Radiant Destiny mm -hmm. uh, is is you know is a card that exists already that pairs really nicely with March of the Multitudes. Um, you know, uh, Secure the Wastes has won a Pro Tour in the past, and this is another Secure the Wastes uh, uh, variant. Just extreme. I'm very excited about this card in every format uh, up until Modern, obviously, but you know, Standard, Sealed, Draft. This is an extremely potent, powerful card. Let's just, I could just think of it this way, okay? <laughs> Now, first of all, it's a limited bomb. This thing's insane. Yeah. It easily can tell you, well, I'm playing Celestia in this draft, but much like other cards we talked about. Just think about doing this card, playing this card, and then doing it for another one. Right. And you're just like, oh, wait, I just made 10 creatures. Let's make 10 more. Right. Woo! And then you untap and attack for 27 right. billion damage. Yeah, you untap and then you play <clears> the <throat> six mana split card overrun, and then they're just dead. And, and they're you just gain dead. 50 or whatever. Yeah, because they're all with lifelink too. Yeah. And again, this is instant speed. This is your your opponent smashes in. You instantly make all of these lifelinking tokens. Right. I, it's hard to say too many good things about this card. I mean, you can even just sort of block with the tokens you have, and then, yeah, you're going to lose them, then you tap them, you know, make a bunch yep. more, untap, or, you know, if any of them survive, start your next turn, crack back. Right. I mean, there's so many things you can do Decree with of Justice is actually a pretty similar card to this as well, mm -hmm. while Decree was the cycling right. side of it. Yeah. Um, you know, you still get a bunch of 1-1s, one you can still do a lot of the same tricks. God, this card is ridiculous. Like, it's actually ridiculous. Yeah, card's great. Yeah, this is this is one of those, like, you know, instead of having something like Sphinx's Revelation be the best thing, why don't we just have a token maker and be speak, the best Speaking thing? of the Sphinx's Revelation, uh, after Return to Ravnica block ended, people realized that there were uh, nine total X spells spread across all of the guilds except for Celestia. And this is, completes yeah. an accidental cycle wow. that they made. Well, it completes it, all right. Yeah. It completes me. That's what it does. It completes me. 
Rosemane Centaur is a green and a white. Great drag name. That's yeah. a great one. Is a green and white and three generic mana for a four four common centaur. So, so the a let's let's back up. Rosemane Centaur, great drag name, is a white, a green, and three generic mana for a four four <laughs> common centaur soldier soldier with convoke and vigilance. This is card's great. This card's really very good. Really good. Um, you know, four four for five is nothing to sneeze at. You know, be cheaper. Yeah, we we used to get uh, we used to get Dirkwood boards for that. Now you get vigilance and convoke. Um, just a just a solid beater. Yeah, I mean, turn one dork, turn two dork. You got this on turn three. Like that's yeah. very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just one of those like you know you don't want infinite of this in your deck, but this is a card you want in your no, deck. I would play multiples. I would, I would play, play two. two. I'd play two. Mm -hmm. I don't. Th I think three. You might start getting gummed up in your hand a little might bit. Be, yeah. But I think two would be terrific. Sure. Somala Woodshaper. Another great drag name. It's true. Woodshaper, if you will. <laughs> a green. <laughs> You're welcome, Ruben. A green, a white, and two generic mana for a 2-1 common elf druid. When it enters the battlefield, you look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or enchantment card from among them and put them in your hand. And you put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. So this is the enchantment mattering card that we were looking for with Deadweight. This is the only one, right? Sure. There's like a return of permanent card. I mean, it does play well with the green-white satyr that lets you draw cards from Corsa. Sure. Right. Which is very good. Yeah. Uh, I saw this card in play uh, during the pre pre release, I believe it was. It didn't do a lot. No. It didn't do very much. You know, if yeah, you the, whiff, the 2 it 1 hurts. body here is not as relevant uh, as it is on the other two ones that we've referenced earlier. Right. Um, four mana is a lot just to draw a specific kind of card. And again, if you, especially in limited, you're only going to have. 15, 17 creatures in your deck, not a ton of enchantments. This is going to whiff a lot of the time. This to me is, I'm honestly kind of impressed by how bad it is, and I don't mean that necessarily in a bad way. Right. It's literally kind of a bad card, and they don't really make a lot of bad cards these days, and you're like, you need to try. Yeah. wait, this kind of sucks. And yeah. you're like, okay, I'm, I'm okay with that, that's cool. Tristani Discordant is next. It's a I green. I love this. This card's amazing. It's a green, a white, and three generic mana for a 1 4 mythic legendary dryad. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. When it enters the battlefield, create two 1 1 white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. And at the beginning of your end step, each player gains control of all creatures they own. Isn't hmm. that sweet? So you essentially get, you know, so those 1 1s are now 2 2s. So you get yep. two two twos and a 1 4 for five mana, which is not bad. Flavor wise, I love the flavor that the, the three have personalities are not speaking to each other. And you can see that by how kind of radically different, yeah. you know, the abilities are. Where it's like this one head's going to give everything an anthem. This one head's just going to make two things. This other one's like fine. You can keep everything you have. And so it really, it really embodies the spirit of the card and, and, yeah. and the turmoil that the personalities are having. I think this is quite good. Yeah, I mean, five power is for five mana is always going to be good. Spread across a bunch of bodies is what the Celestia want to be doing. Right. Uh, that bottom ability is tailor made for mostly commander, mm -hmm. but also there is the Demir steal a creature spell um, that is somewhat relevant and other confiscate effects. And so right. um, I, I don't anticipate this making huge waves in standard, uh, but it is another anthem, so you got to keep an eye on it. If there's a green white convoke, sure, craziness deck. Yeah, I mean, end of turn. Make X giant you know, X lifelink one ones drop this. You know that's that's reasonable. Yeah. Smash with all these two twos. Yeah, which is great. Uh, this card is amazingly limited. I, don't, oh, I have sure. to tell you, this card is a bomb. It's huge. It pumps your whole team. It makes a bunch of blockers. It saves you. Yeah. It comes back from behind. Like it slices. It dices. Yeah. Yeah. It's got that sweet little last ability just in case they have that weird Demir card. Yeah, just in case they have the corner case yeah. one of in the set. Yeah, Vernati Shieldmate. It's a green or white. And a colorless mana, so a Celestia mana and one generic mana for a 2 2 common human soldier with vigilance. Yep. Curve filler, decent. Perfectly fine. convoke. Yeah. I like it. I'm, I'm happy to it's play fine. it. Even if you have to play it in. There's a bunch of reasonable 2 2s and 2 1s in this set. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, there's there's the way to just say, like, look, I need a bear. Yeah. You know, I need, I need a bear in this set and a bear in that set. There you go. Bear. World Soul Colossus is green and white and X for a 0-0 zero, zero uncommon elemental with Convoke and it enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. I love this card. This card's sweet. This is So there was a card called Nimbus Swimmer uh, yeah. that was X blue-green. Did not have Convoke, but instead had Flying. Yeah. Obviously the evasion was super relevant. Um, this card having Convoke means it's always going to be bigger. It's yeah. just always going to be bigger. Um, you can tap your Amara to it uh, if you happen to have an Amara. Tap your Vigilance creatures for it. 
Uh, very rarely going to be smaller than a 4-4. Just a pretty good card. Very nice. Well, look, we're going to start here with the other cards as we are finished with the Celestia on the green cards. I want to start with the Lockets. I don't want to go over every Locket. They all do the same thing. Right. But we can talk about the Locket cycle. Yeah. The Lockets this time replaced the uh, Clue... So there's the Clue Stones, clue stones. from Return to Ravnica, <laughs> and then there were Signets in original Ravnica. And then there were Key Ravnica. Runes. Uh, there were also uncommon Key Runes yeah. that were able to turn into creatures, mm -hmm. very similar also to the Monuments from Dragons, um, you know, things like... Uh, um, Manalith, right? You know, uh, three mana cost rocks are are uh, se seem to be a staple right now of and, this format. And signets are just too good. Signets are way too good. Bounce lands were ridiculous. Absurd. Bounce lands were like you first picked were the fine. key runes were fine. Key runes were fine. They were. Uh, I'm happy to stones see them. were too weak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the lockets seem to be right there in that middle ground. Uh, I, I, from what I could tell, it wasn't terribly difficult to activate the lockets. No. Um, and drawing two cards. The first time I read this, I was like, that's a lot for a card. Oh, every single one of them's a divination. I oh, that. I didn't realize. I like. I saw like the Demir one, and I was like, yeah. oh, it draws two cards. I wonder what the other one. I was like, Boros well, draws all, two cards? Boros and Celestia, Celestia are the two where, that don't have card draw effects, whereas in, you know... You have Notion Rain. You have uh, uh, Cir uh, uh, Chemister's Insight. You have other ways to draw cards in other color combinations. Right. Um, you have the black. Uh, you have some black ways to pay life to gain to gain card advantage. Celestia and Boros don't really have that. No. And so you are giving them really powerful card advantage tools in addition to letting them ramp their mana. Mm -hmm. In Celestia, that's pretty safe because the keyword ability this time around is Convoke, and that's already a cost reduction mechanic. So the, the playing a locket isn't going to be that much more broken. Right. And in Boros, they're trying to kill you early anyway, so they're probably not going to be able to get much advantage out of the two cards drawn. So I really like how they balance the lockets, even for the colors that don't typically get that effect. So for those who don't know, uh, the lockets are guild name locket. It's three generic mana. It's a common. They're artifacts. And they tap for either color of the guild's colors. And then for four of the guild's colors, which can be, for example, for Boros here, we have four white, four red, any combination thereof. You tap, you sacrifice it, you draw two cards. Every single one runs like that. And again, as you mentioned, in places and in colors where you don't get card draw spells, right. this is amazing. Now, I'm, I, would, I would hope that we could cycle through the cards as we're doing the video. Hopefully that's happening right now. I sure. don't know if it will be. But if that is happening, all of the lockets have really interesting, flavorful, fun flavor text about yeah. what the lockets represent. Mm -hmm. They're really cool in, in the quotes and the stories and where they come from and what they mean to the various guilds. Nice. We pass these deeds. We pass these along to our fellow soldiers to recognize deeds of valor. Yeah. They won't stay with you for long. Yep. And then and and so that one is obviously the the uh, the lawful good Boros uh, 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 sort of conversation, and the, the various other lockets have different. Yeah. Uh, representation. The Lazarius to the reanimators can find you. Yeah. <laughs> we heard it at all times it will guide our reanimators to your corpse, which is fantastic. And the Demir one being, wear this and take your place among the shadows, wise, lethal, and unseen. Sure, just sort of. So, you know, d different uh, messages from each of the different guilds, and I think that that's really fun. Yeah, it's super cool, and they have the, the Is It and the Celestia, which is awesome. But uh, these are all very, very playable. Yeah. Again, I was... I was honestly shocked. I was like, wow, I'm never going to activate that second ability. You are totally going to activate that second ability. In the Guildgate five color deck, especially, I think that these are, you're probably going to want two or three mm -hmm. in those decks because not only do they jump you from three to five, they but they, mana. they also they fix all your mana and their card advantage later in the game, Absolutely. which is crazy. Which is what you want to do. Chamber Sentry is next. It is an X generic mana card. It is a 0 0 rare artifact creature construct. It enters the battle, battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. Nice. You may, so it has sunburst, kind of. It has sunburst, but it doesn't say that. Right. X generic mana tap and remove X plus one plus one counters from Chamber Sentry colon. It deals X damage to any target. Or Rainbow, as in all five colors of mana, white, blue, black, red, green, colon, return Chamber Sentry from your graveyard to your hand. Very cool. This could see play in the Ramos EDH decks, the Joda EDH decks, you know, or the people who love to live dangerously and play the Sliver Queen Progenitus, you know, EDH decks, just as an excuse to play all five colors. You right. know, when you see that, it's Chromat. a very specific yeah. deck that wants that. Nice. Yeah, this was uh, our buddy Ian Dixon and our buddy John Wells from their podcast Eyes on the Mize. This was their preview card. Nice. This is the payoff for the five-color strategy. Yeah, this is. card is insane. 
Uh, it, it is a 5.5 five that has removal built in and it lets you rebuy it. It is everything you want to be doing. Yeah, this is your payoff. This yes. is the, I'm playing five colored gates. No one else is clearly. I get the seventh pick because who wants this thing? I'm, in the I don't know what today? you're talking about. I'm first picking this thing. Well, you will. What I'm saying is it comes to you seventh sure. pick because no one else yeah. is in this how, archetype. How bad is this as a 3-3 three, three, though? 3-3 three, three for three. Mm. How bad is it as a 2-2? Two, two? Oh, it's real bad as a 2 Is it? It's a bear. It's, that, that can ping things. It's pretty bad because you have to pay more mana than to it to ping things. It's for, I mean, like Goblin, you pay one mana, right? The the new Goblin yeah. versus this, you'd have to pay all the mana that you already paid for. It. Sure. It's and it's not great. Obviously, the ideal scenario is five five for five. Right. It's pl it's reasonable as a four four for four. Four four for four, I'd be happy with. Yeah. But anything smaller than that, I think it's just not worth it. Okay. Um, it, you I mean, know, sometimes your your Boros opponent goes one drop, two drop, and you're like, well, I guess I need a, a Nessie Courser, and then you play this out on turn three. Right. Like it's not horrendous. It's not awful, and it's not trash. It's right. just not that. Great. It's just not ideal. It's like it won't you know make right. you feel bad. It just won't make you feel great about it. Right. Chromatic Praise. Finance Jesus. Yeah. This card, ED, this card, there's only been one printing of this, EDH players. I mean, this is something that I have, I have at least three EDH decks that, that need this card. I've, I've purchased two myself. The third one desperately could use it. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Also has the updated text of uh, removing the mana pool reference yeah. from two different it's parts of the card. Month, it was $12 a pop. Wow. Like, and I saw 15 yeah. before the reprint. Um, and these are, I think, going for about $5, which is yeah. great. Just a perfect kind of reprint for this set. Obviously, Thank probably you. not going to make a ton of impact on standard. So I'll see it could. It, yeah, it could. Yeah. It certainly is not an unreasonable card to see play in standard. But, uh, this was one of my favorite cards to first pick uh, oh, amongst sure. among cubes, for example, yep. which is always fun. Chromatic Lantern is a three generic mana rare artifact that says lands you control have tap, add one mana of any color, or itself has tap, add one mana of any color. And that is obviously incredibly yep. powerful in a multicolor environment. Absolutely. So. When you're able to first pick <clears> this and you're like, well, I'm definitely going to be picking every colored pip that I can possibly get, all those crazy uncommons, all of the split cards, as much as I possibly can, pick up a couple lockets and all the guild gates along the way. A big deal about this format, as a reminder, I know we said it a couple set review episodes ago, but every pack is going to have a guild gate. So by the end of the draft, there are going to be 24 guild gates. There's a, there are three per player. So if you want to be the guild gate drafter, you don't need to take every guild gate. You can take a fourth of them. You can take a third of them and still end up good. So you can start out with the powerful cards. First pick a bomb, second pick removal, third pick a, a good creature, fourth pick another piece of removal, and then start picking up gates once things start drying up. Right. And I, I feel like, at least I want to feel like, that Wizards has created the format in such a way that doing the Gilgate, Gilgate, yeah. Gilgate for the whole first pack and then picking the best card and then the rest of them is not a viable strategy. Sure. You have to mix and match. You have to ebb and flow and you can't just be like, get all my fix and then get all my cards I want. It doesn't necessarily Eben, work. Eben, Eben Irwin? Eben. Eben Flowin? Wow. Okay. Gatekeeper Gargoyle is a six generic mana, uncommon 3-3 three, three artifact creature Gargoyle with flying and enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each gate you control. Perfect. This is you, buddy. Yeah. There aren't actually a ton of gate <clears throat> payoff cards. Um, this uh, 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 artifact or, or uh, aircraft control lizard. The red white one. The There's the blue one. one that draws There's your cards. The blue, that's a rare though, isn't it? Or maybe it's an uncommon. Uncommon. Um, and, and then there's this uncommon as well. There just aren't a ton of payoffs for it, which is fine because it's supposed to be a sort of niche Fringe. archetype. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but this one's quite good. Even if you have just one gate, it's a 4-4 four, four flyer for 6, which is a reasonable rate. Once you get it to a 5, it's a dragon, and anything above that is just gravy. Oh, yeah. This is one of those cards that you you should probably play as long as you have just a couple guild gates yeah. in your colors. Like, play it and use it. Again, only takes one guild gate to make this not embarrassing. Yes. It really does. 6 mana, 4-4 four, four flyer. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on board with that. Correct. Glaive of the Guild Pact is a two generic mana uncommon artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus one plus zero for each gate you control and has vigilance and menace and you equip for three generic mana. I, you were just saying about the games I and know. the know. I don't think this is the card you want in that deck though. Why? Because what, who's it like? Are we, what are we putting this on? Does it matter? I guess it doesn't matter. It but doesn't it's like, matter. But that deck doesn't really want an aggressive equipment. Like I just want to kill people with whatever two one I have laying around. Well, now, you got to kill it with something. No, I have a little bubble here. Maybe I've just been playing too much World of Warcraft. But 
That does not look. That's like not a glaive. glaive yeah. To me. So there was like, some chatter about this on Vorthos Twitter and on uh, on uh, what's etymology a glaive? Twitter. A glaive. It's sort of like you hold it with your hand, and it's kind of like a. Like it's a it's like a yeah. It's typically it's a sword, but it also the, the sword part covers. Kind of like hand. a batleth if you watch Klingon Star Trek. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or like but a Cuban cigar cover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's if you've not seen those whatever things. that is. Right. This like, doesn't that's now. A sword. Right. That's a sword, and it has a hilt. Which I think means it's not a glaive. Yeah. Now, I've also seen other definitions of glaive where this fits that definition, but the most common definition of the thing that Aaron just described is that it is not that. So mm-hmm. now uh, words can change and words can shift meaning, and certainly this is not the first time uh, the word glaive has been used to describe a wide sword of some kind. But It's uh, also not the first time that Wizards has put a sword on something and then said it was a sword when it wasn't a sword. Like they did with the promo uh, sword of feast and famine. Oh, sure, that, had... that was a glaive. <laughs> maybe, What's maybe it? it was a glaive. It was a stick with with blades with, on the end. With blades on the end of it. You know, whatever that happens to be. But yeah. the point is, all I'm saying is, this is the card you want. It gives it vigilance and menace. Yeah. You put it on any dork you want. Sure. And, and so the it... vigilance is the most relevant part because you're able to keep it back on blocking duty as well. Right. So you're playing these high toughness creatures that want to get super big and get yeah. in there as much as you can. Give them plus five plus zero oh would be insane. Sure. And if you have a if you're if if you're having trouble finishing games, if you have, if your main avenue to victory is one-one life linkers, then certainly this is the way to, to turn that around. Sure. All right. There's the is that locket. Rampaging Monument is a four generic mana zero zero uncommon cleric, artifact creature cleric. It has trample and there's a battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. And whenever you cast a multicolor spell, you put a plus one plus one counter I on like it. This. Like it's a come. cleric? Yeah. What in the world? It's Ravnica, a, a you're so crazy. It's a monument. It's cray cray. Yeah. This reminds me, there is a uh, a group of about a dozen eight-story tall statues in the city of Waterdeep in Dungeons & Dragons oh, that when the city is attacked by, you know, Tarasks or Liches or uh, uh, Dragons or something like that, they come alive and defend the city. That's what this card reminds me of, especially nice. the angle of it. It's an enormous cleric. Uh, it's also got that big swingy thing that uh, that people walk around with. I think it's called a sensor. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's already a hill giant, and so you only need to play one multicolored spell to make it a four four for four, and that's awesome. And it has trample. And it has trample already, which is yeah. great. Be advised, suspect suspect is nine stories tall, marble hair, and answers to Saint Gustav. There you go. Perfect. All right. Silent Dart is a one generic mana, uncommon artifact, four generic mana, tap, sacrifice it, colon, it deals three damage to target creature. This reminds me of the Blood Fallow Candle, you know, something that you can just sort of play early on, and then when you have the mana and you're ready to pop it, you can. It's fine. Nice. And for those who are listening on the podcast... They're very Ruben confused I, by our silent dart joke. Ruben and I were being really clever about our dart. I didn't um, realize this was going to be an audio-only version as well. That's why I did that. I create audio-only versions as well because the fans asked for it. Well, my apologies. It's fine. It, it's so well, it's, not, not for this. I didn't realize the set review was going to have that as well. Right. That's my, was it's my fine. confusion. You just shot a silent dart in the listener's hearts. Wow. Also good with the uh, the Finder Broker Trapper Keeper. Yep. Um, <laughs> if you're able to rebuy artifacts, uh, this is just colorless removal, mm-hmm. being able to take down Permanent any of the, removal. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and to take down any of the uh, 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 the guild mages and any of that kind of stuff. It's a bad rate because it's supposed to be right. Like it's meant to be a bad rate. It's meant to be like, okay, fine. I don't have a lot of removal, but I do have the Silent Dart. Yep. Don't pick this thing early. Pick it mid to late. Pick it if you need removal and you ain't got any. Yep. Pick it early in pack three if you don't have any removal. Right. We just had explosive apparatus uh, in Corset. Mm-hmm. Um, there aren't any artifact synergies in this set, so it's a little bit worse, but uh, but it's fine. Wand of Vertebrae is All right, next. listen. Listen, Oh, listeners. God. When I told you to throw me a bone, this isn't what I meant. Ah! I see what she did. We saw what she did. She has a bone to pick with wizards. She sure does. It's a one generic mana uncommon artifact. Tap, colon, put the top card of your library into your graveyard. Two generic mana. Tap, exile, wand of vertebra. 
uh, shuffle up to five target cards from your graveyard into your library. Yeah, so this is basically a Shriekhorn sees play in modern. Um, Shriekhorn has charge counters and basically does something similar except it's two cards. Um, but this is great, actually. You know, you play it on turn one, and this is exactly what the, you know, the undergrowth, you know, or the surveil decks want to be doing. You know, you want to be trying to hit those Narcanibas. You want to be trying to fill your yard so that you can, you can get undergrowth. I actually right. really, really like this. And, you know, there is a way to kind of get around, you know, graveyard hate if you do right. think that, you know, something might be coming in response. Quick, hide your cards. You know, this I card, really like this. This card does a couple of interesting things. First of all, it's the it's another shuffle effect. It's mm -hmm. another Gaia's blessing. It's another uh, surveillance, um, and that's that's pretty cool. It also interacts really interestingly with that red enchantment that doesn't let you play anything else yeah. that isn't on the top of your that's deck. That's pretty neat. So that is an exposed card. So you're able to sort of filter through that if you really need to. Also gives you a shuffle effect if you really need to. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good card. I wouldn't say that it's, you know, backbreaking, but... It's really interesting how playable this card is. <laughs> how playable this card is. the punchline is. indicator. Jeez. To uh, not only Golgari strategies, but also is it strategies. Yeah. To be able to put jumpstart cards in your graveyard. For sure. There's, is awesome. Yeah, I mean, you can see the pieces assembling. There's, you know, the bones are there. I wasn't going to stop making bone sure, jokes. Sure, I'm not spineless. <laughs> oh my god! Boros Gilgate and the Gilgates entirely is next. The gates are fantastic. There's yeah. two different artworks for each one. The kind of front door and then the kind of back right. door. And again, I, I'm hoping hey. we're cycling through the arts because the flavor texts in particular are really interesting for the various Gilgates. There's two different arts mm -hmm. that are focusing on the, uh, the current leader of each guild and the prime rival of that guild. Mm -hmm. So for the uh, for so the ten legends or the the so Boros uh, has Aurelia on one and then Tajik, and Tajik on, the other. on another. Yeah. The Golgari one would have Vraska and Izona and, and so on. on yeah, and so all of the legends, the legendary permanents, the eight creatures, and the two planeswalkers are uh, going to be featured in the flavor text, which I really appreciate. Um, and the art is you're able to switch out the arts. Um, which are nice. You get to pick whichever one of the arts you like best. If you prefer a slightly larger uh, text box, mm -hmm. uh, Who does some it? of them, yeah, exactly. Some of them have larger text than other ones. I saw that the two guild gates had different size fonts. Mm -hmm. If that's an important thing to you, um, this is the point at which I am going to have a. Uh, uh, I was going to say bone to pick, but this is. I have an issue. Oh my god! <clears throat> I have an issue with uh, the Boros because the Boros really needed to change their s insignia. Why? Because I can't wear a t-shirt that has a power fist on it. That's a problem, I think. Unless and, you have, like, Magic the Gathering right there right. underneath it, so please don't think I'm which, wearing a which hate is, shirt. Which is kind of awkward. I think that that's more awkward than the Safe Word shirt, for example. That's my opinion. Um, Maybe. Men's but, on and, and, and it's not the first time that they, that they would have done that. They've updated the uh, symbols of the various guilds before. So. Right. Well, they did almost always for clarity. Sure. Um, you know, if just just make it kind of cleaner when yeah. you look at the old Azorius and the new Azorius logo from original Ravnica to Return to Ravnica, and even here, I don't think they've updated anything sure. beyond Return to Ravnica's revamps. It just felt like a thing that they could have done mm -hmm. in the last six years to just, you know, I, I, it seems like a marketing decision. I, I I I like it. You know what I mean? I I like the the power fist thing. I think that's really cool. I think, I think it's it a great logo neat. and makes sense for the guild. Right for the guild. The problem is that once you step out, so once you step past the fourth wall. Then you can't. Then then it's 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 more controversial. It's the most controversial symbol of the ten outside of a Magic the Gathering context. All right. Next up is Gateway Plaza. It is a common land that's a gate that enters the battlefield tapped. And when it enters the battlefield, you may you sacrifice it unless you play one generic mana and you tap to add one mana of any color. This is Rupture Spire 2.0. But, but it's, now a gate, it's a gate, which is huge. Yes. Yeah. I didn't and, realize at first that this was a gate. Really? I thought it was just like why did they rename it? Right. <coughs> Guild Mage's Forum is a rare land that taps to add a colorless mana. That's a wingding itself. One generic mana, tap colon, add one mana of any color. If that mana is spent on a multicolored creature spell, that creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. This card's kind of sweet. I mean, it's a Shimmering Grotto or an Unknown Shores uh, kind of effect with a little bit of upside. So that's pretty cool. Commander decks are going to eat this up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's super cool. Um... Going through the uh, dual lands, the sacred foundries of the world, the temple gardens of the world, they're Play all them. yeah, <laughs> slay them all, slay them all, and they'll be in the rare slot, not in the land slot. So right. you will have a guild gate as well as a dual land in your pack. Sorry about your luck for your deck, but 
be happy that you have but one of the most expensive rares, not mythic, right. but rares in the set. That Titus Lunter Temple Garden is spectacular. Spectacular. Support his Kickstarter if you're not already. Absolutely. Yeah. But our last special guest has chosen Watery Grave. Ooh, nice. Let's see who it is. Good evening. I'm A.E. Marling, writer of Grave Text for Wizards of the Coast and member of the Lorgois podcast. Never mind where I am at midnight tonight. That's not important. What is important is clearing out the misinformation surrounding the Demir Guild. It is true that at one point no one knew they existed. In, it. in fact, the Guild Pact required it. When an agent of the Guild Pact publicly arrested their Guildmaster, per their machinations, that created a paradox which destroyed the Guild Pact, leading to a vacuum of power and the necessity for a living Guild Pact later on. But what's important is that was a long time ago. Now the Demir are just simple, honest couriers, librarians, record keepers, utterly trustworthy. Now there are some rumors that if you go into the black market, uh, the, the moon market or the Bane Alley, and have certain dark desires, those will be fulfilled by the Demir agents. But that's just pure speculation and no evidence of that. And further, there's some darker whispers that there's some, a deep underground watery grave, there's an area called the Dusk Mantle, that there's some necro sages and a Guildmaster Lazav which not only control all the Demir, but control all the information throughout the city. That's just a conspiracy theory, theory discounted. And lastly, again, hello Magic Mikes, I'm A.E. Marling, definitely not a Demir agent. <laughs> Wow. wow. That was spectacular. That was. One of those, not only writes flavor text, but just like, just oozes. Like, oozes flavor. Yeah. He loves cosplaying. I just can't think of it. They're one of the, just one of the most visible Vorthos is out there right now. Yeah. He lives and breathes it. And uh, we really appreciate you hanging out and being a part of the show. That was fantastic. And another fantastic note to end on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This was an amazing project. Whew. This was yeah, yeah. quite the mountain to climb. But we got there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what what after we've done this, what is the card that went from your your I don't know about this card to something that's now on your radar? Hmm. Uh, probably Aurelia. Like I said, Aurelia was one of those cards that people were like, "She's great," and I was like, "I don't, I don't get it." And yeah. now after this, I'm like, "Oh, she's really good." Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if anything necessarily changed my mind that much. Maybe it was just seeing all the Celestia cards. Like mm. the Celestia cards. Together. Impressive. Like that yeah. uncommon thing yeah. that has five mana, make a 1-1, one, one, and you can tap yeah. all your guys, and all the elves have vigilance. I'm like, why does that card have everything? Right. I've also become a lot more... Okay with it, the set? Oh, oh. No, mm. no, I didn't know. I've become mm. a lot more okay with Undergrowth. It doesn't oh, okay. seem as... Um, obviously, it's not what I would like, sure. but I'll take it. Like, I, I wouldn't... But you can get it up for the under? <laughs> that works trying to tell for me, the card that I was not expecting to be okay with and then was convinced by you guys and by uh, the, the video sent in by Tappy Toe Claws is niv -Mizzet. I wasn't sold on that card. I thought, I mean, it's a 5-5 it's a five, five flyer that is really bad against Planeswalkers. I was not sold on that card. But then Sarkon comes up and Dragon Sword comes Sarkin, up. Yeah. Uh, I did not read the entire card. Yeah, the, fourth, wow. the fourth <laughs> sentence, a bunch of legends in this set have four sentences. Yeah, and so by the time you get to sentence four, it's just like, all right, I'm exhausted. I need a nap, right? <laughs> and so by the time I got there, I was just like, oh, this is probably just draw a card when you play something. It's when anybody plays something, and that's a huge deal. So that's the card to me that jumped up the most in terms of stock in my mind. So are there going to be any pie bets? For this one? For this set. Uh, yeah, me and you, Mausoleum Secrets is, is awful. And that's, there we go. That, that's I'm, the I've one. already got, I'm already down two, so I'm going to skip this one. Yeah. Well, I'll avenge you, it's cool. Okay. Oh, it's okay. Well, I mean, there's you a... got cake for your birthday, you might as well have pie to the list. So. Hey. Yeah. Well, look, I do have pie to add to the list. As there'll be an extra special video to go along with this set review of uh, of you know some some bets settling some pie bets settling those bets yes it's gonna be great but until next time thank you guys so very much thanks to everyone on Kickstarter who can make this help happen thanks to all the people who support us on Patreon and for you for watching or listening it's been terrific be sure to smash the like button. smash the like button drop kick the subscribe drop kick Drop kick the um, subscribe. Jump off of a steel cage to, to sign up for Kickstarter. Right. And break uh, break some tables, ladders, and chairs for the the Patreon. Right. And then do something like and then shoot the little bell. The little bell that says like I uploaded something, shoot that thing. Nice. Right. Great. Nice. So I am Evan Irwin. I'm Aaron Campbell. And I'm Ruben Bressler. And you have watched the entire complete set review of Guilds of Ravnica. Thanks so much for watching. We tapped all the cards so you didn't have to.